Today's members business debate on motion number 11308 in the name of Jim Eadie on Iman Hussein blood donation campaign 2014. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I'd invite those members who wish to speak in this debate to press the request to speak buttons now or as soon as possible. Mr Eadie, if you are ready, uh, seven minutes please to make your point. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to bring this debate to the Chamber and would like to thank my colleagues from different parties who have enabled me to do so by supporting the motion. I'm particularly grateful to those who have chosen to speak in the debate tonight and I look forward to hearing their contributions. This debate provides a fantastic opportunity to draw the attention of the wider public to the Imam Hussein blood donation campaign and to the importance of donating blood in general. I would like to welcome Iftikhar Ali, Shabir Beg and Asif Sheikh of the Edinburgh Alul Bait Society, Jennifer Wilson and Francis Steele of the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service and the members of the Islamic Unity Society, all of whom have joined us in the public gallery, as well as everyone else who has made the effort to attend the debate this evening. The Edinburgh Alul Bait Society, the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service and the Islamic Unity Society have worked together to organise blood donation sessions tomorrow and this coming Saturday at the Donor Centre on Lauriston Place. They have also worked together to promote this amongst the Muslim community in Edinburgh and the Lothians. The Edinburgh Initiative is part of a wider campaign which included donation sessions in Glasgow last week and elsewhere across the United Kingdom, with other sessions being held in cities including Manchester, London, Leeds and Birmingham. The Imam Hussein blood donation campaign was launched in 2006 and was the first of its kind in the UK. The campaign was initiated to encourage members of the Muslim community to donate blood and was named after Imam Hussein for a reason. Imam Hussein, who lived in the 7th century, was the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad and is one of the most important figures in Islam. Imam Hussein is known and admired for refusing to compromise his own values and for being a selfless person, sacrificing his own blood in the Islamic month of Muharram in the fight against tyranny and for the benefit of the wider community. It was therefore very apt to name this campaign after him. Muharram is the first month in the Islamic New Year and is currently underway. Holding the blood donation campaign during Muharram is not only a fitting tribute to Imam Hussein's sacrifice, it also makes for a good New Year's resolution to regularly start donating blood. For those of us who are not of the Islamic faith, this is something for all of us to consider when we make our own New Year's resolutions eight weeks from today. As much as the Imam Hussein blood donation campaign, which is aimed at the Muslim community in particular, deserves to be supported, what we would all want to take away from today's debate is that we need more regular blood donors from all backgrounds, religions and cultures in Scotland. As the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service quite rightly does not ask donors uh, about their ethnicity, it is not possible to identify whether there is any ethnic or religious group which provides more or fewer blood donations than any other. But does it matter? Surely all initiatives which are designed to encourage anybody who is physically suitable and willing to donate blood are to be welcomed and encouraged. That is why I am so pleased to be part of this debate today. If you were asked to guess the percentage of active blood donors in Scotland, would you guess that this is 25%, 20% or perhaps 10%? There are currently 139,000 active blood donors in Scotland. This is less than 4% of the eligible population. The Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service considers as the eligible population those between 17 and 70 years old who weigh more than 50 kilos. The Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service is in need of 800 donors every day, each donor providing one unit. On average, 645 units are drawn each day. This means we really do need more regular donations to meet existing demand. One may not think going to the donor centre once and donating blood makes a huge difference to what is required. However, one single blood donation can save up to three adult lives and up to seven children's lives. One woman can donate her blood up to three times a year, a man up to four times a year. This means that a woman could save up to nine adult lives and 21 children's lives in a single year. A man can save up to 12 adult lives and 28 children's lives each year. Just, just allow the poignancy of that fact to sink in. 
and reflect on the difference that blood donations can make. Another fact that particularly struck me is that a mere three Sorry, a mere three teaspoons of blood is often enough to keep a premature baby alive. Three teaspoons, presiding officer. I know a number of people in this parliament who stir more sugar than that into their coffee. So let us imagine how many lives are touched by that one donation. It is the lives of this baby's parents, siblings, other children within the family and the circle of family friends. It is not only the life of that tiny little human being that is positively influenced by one blood donation, but the whole family and extended family. Of course, blood donations are required in trauma situations such as road traffic collisions and complications at childbirth and during surgery. But they also benefit people who are living with leukaemia and other forms of cancer on a more regular basis. And this means that there is a constant need for blood donations for a variety of situations. Presiding officer, I commend those who will be donating their blood as part of the campaign this week as well as all regular blood donors of all faiths and of no faith in Edinburgh and across the Lothian region. I hope many people will be inspired to make their own contribution in the future. Finally, I would like to thank the Edinburgh Alul Bait Society, the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service and the Islamic Unity Society for organising the Edinburgh initiative of the Imam Hussein Blood Donation Campaign 2014 and for enabling me to bring this issue of blood donation to the attention of the Parliament this evening. I wish them every success with the donation sessions tomorrow and on Saturday in Edinburgh, this year and for many years to come. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. I now call on Malcolm Chisholm. Oh, uh, Presiding Officer, minutes, I congratulate Jim Eady on securing a debate about this important campaign which aims to encourage blood donation by evoking the positive lessons from the life of Iman Hussein. As we have heard, the campaign is being run by the Edinburgh Alul Bait Society in conjunction with the Islamic Unity Society and the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service. I join Jim Eady in, in, in welcoming the, the people that he mentioned from the uh, Edinburgh Alul Bail Soci uh, Bait Society. And can I add to that uh, Zahra Hassan, who I know is also in the gallery and who uh, invited me recently to an event organised by the Edinburgh Allo Bait Society. So I'm very well, well aware that the association's objective is to advance the understanding of key teaching of Islam and promote religious and racial harmony. This is the context for the campaign, which aims simultaneously to further awareness of the life of Imam Hussein and address a lack of blood supply. They point out that the campaign works because of the millions of people worldwide who are inspired by his kindness and example of sacrifice. They can then give blood as a way to help others in need and live up to these high ideals. The significant benefits of donation should not be um, underestimated. As Jim Eady has reminded us, every unit of blood donated could save or improve the lives of up to three individuals, depending on the circumstances. On blood donation more generally, too, we should remember the words of the great social scientist Richard Titmuss, who said, we cannot understand the National Blood Transfusion Service without also understanding the National Health Service, its origins, developments and values. And he goes on, the most unsorted act of British social policy in the 20th century has allowed and encouraged sentiments of altruism, reciprocity and social duty to express themselves, to be made explicit in identifiable patterns of behaviour by all social groups and classes. In other countries, such as the United States, there is a commercial blood market, but giving money does not encourage a sense of social responsibility, whereas appealing to the shared values of a group does. This is very much what the Imam Hussein blood donation campaign seeks to do by tying in a drive for donations with positive lessons on the altruistic actions of a respected religious figure. The campaign has grown in support over these first two years, with numbers last year in Edinburgh at 28, 80, 18 of whom were new donors. The 2014 campaign is taking place on the 6th and the 8th of November, as we've heard, and to date has 40 people registered to donate. The Scottish Government has advised that the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service does not collect data on the number of donors by ethnic minority group. This data would perhaps place this campaign within a broader context and help illustrate the need for a greater awareness about donation. 
However, the Muslims Give Blood campaign, which ran across uh, the whole of the UK last year, gives a broader insight into the particular need for donations. It said, not everyone has the same blood type. Without having access to compatible blood types when you're injured, doctors will not be able to provide you with life-saving treatments. And they go on, blood type is generally related to our ethnic origins. For example, 25% of the South Asian communities are blood group B, compared to only 9% of Caucasians. This highlights the urgent need for blood donations from South Asian communities. The Imam Hussein blood donation campaign also highlights that Islam is the religion of mercy and caters for all the problems faced by humanity. In speaking of the relationship between Islam and the altruistic act of donation, they highlight that the religion, and I'm quoting again, acknowledges the needs of people, thus gives concessions and dispensations wherever needed. Hence, it can be said that blood transfusion is lawful as a necessity. Through appealing to members of the community, the campaign, which has been successful in other parts of the UK since 2006, highlights that concern for fellow human beings, philanthropy and empathy are central to the Islamic religion, while also aiming to address a particular problem in the lack of a particular blood type. I wish the campaign well in its 2014 drive and hope that it goes from strength to strength in future. Many thanks. I now call on Dr Nanette Milne to be followed by Hanzala Malik. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I also add my thanks to Jim Eady for bringing this issue to the Chamber this evening. <clears throat> I'm sure I won't be alone in saying that I was unfamiliar with Imam Hussein until I examined his story and the reason why the blood donation campaign was launched in his name in 2006 to increase the number of regular blood donors from Muslim communities. <clears throat> This man, who, as we know, lived in the 7th century Middle East, was known for his generosity and tolerance to different races and social standing, and his martyrdom at the hands of the dictator Yassid is revered by Shia Muslims throughout the world. As someone with a medical background, I am all too familiar with the need for regular blood donors to come forward, particularly those who have a, who have a rare blood type, such as AB negative, which is only held by less than 1% of the UK population. <coughs> When I first gave blood several decades ago, the restrictions on donation were relatively few. But over the years, as knowledge has grown, the list of exclusions has grown significantly. For instance, I had to stop being a donor when I went on to treatment for hypertension. And as a result of recognition of the very long, indeed uncertain, incubation period for CJD, anyone who has received a blood transfusion in the past is now, I understand, banned from blood donation. Also, until three years ago, and following an intensive campaign, gay men throughout the UK were prohibited from giving blood, and there are still restrictions in place. It is, of course, extremely important that blood donation is carefully monitored because of the very serious complications which can occur with it. But it's also important that as many people as possible are recruited as donors, because Scottish patients need 5,000 blood donations every week. And this need is despite the fact that some excellent blood substitutes are available to expand blood volume, because these cannot totally replace whole blood and its derivatives. There are peak times when requirements are high and donations relatively low, such as over Christmas and the New Year. And only last January, parts of England and Wales came within three days of running out of a specific blood group. So efforts have to be maintained to keep up donations throughout the year. The Imam Hussein campaign, which runs throughout the Muharram, the first month of the Islamic calendar, began this year on the 24th of October and will conclude on the 23rd of this month. In place for the last eight years, its aim has been to encourage Muslims to play an active part in donating blood. And it's worth reminding ourselves that the religion of Islam is not against blood donations. Indeed, there's also nothing prohibiting Muslims from donating to non-Muslims, so long as they're not fighting against Islam. And because Muslims who come from ethnic minority backgrounds often have rarer blood groups, the need to encourage them to give blood is all the more necessary. As Scotland does require 5,000 blood donations every week, and as only 5% of those eligible to donate do so, then the vast majority rely on a small minority for blood stocks. That's why a concerted effort must be made to reach out to as many groups, communities and individuals as possible the Imam Hussein campaign fulfills a necessary purpose in exactly that. Jimmy D's motion understandably focuses on Edinburgh and the Lothians and highlights blood donation sessions taking place there uh, here this Thursday and on Saturday. But as part of a wider campaign in conjunction with Islamic Unity Society and the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service, we've seen similar events in Glasgow, 
and at a UK level in London, Birmingham and Manchester, as well as other major UK cities. I'm not aware of the campaign spreading to my region of the North East, but perhaps the Minister could, in his contribution, advise me on that. Presiding officer, by raising the crucial importance of giving blood, this debate will hopefully go some way to seeing a rise in the number of people within our Muslim communities making that contribution. As I said at the outset, Islam is not at all against blood donations. And it says in the Quran, if anyone saved a life, it would be as if he saved the life of all mankind. My thanks again to Jim Eady for securing the debate. Many thanks. <clears throat> and I call on Hanzala Malik to be followed by James Dornan. Uh, good evening and thank you very much, Presiding Officer. First, I thank Jim Eady for securing uh, this debate this evening. Thank you very much, Jim, for, for this uh, very important debate. Uh, Imam Hussain blood donation in Scotland has had tremendous hope in raising the participation of blood donors within the Muslim communities in Scotland. The Imam Hussain blood donation campaign has been able to disperse various misconceptions that are um, assumed with some Muslim communities. Raising the Islamic approval of the act of blood donation is important and vital, and I have been one don donor myself on a regular basis. The promotion of blood donation is vital in maintaining the standards of health in Scotland. And Scotland is pri privileged to have organizations as such as one I have mentioned. This caters for specialist communities to raise awareness among communities of the need of blood donations, which is vital. In my constituency, there are various organizations which promote the importance of maintaining excellent well-being of Scottish public amongst ethnic minority communities. One of these acts, one of these active organizations includes the well funding in, in Glasgow. The well fund, the funding aim is to increase the involvement and awareness of the Scottish public in helping those less fortunate. Educating people who now can improve their health and change their lives for an overall betterment by creating awareness of various health conditions, including providing clean and safe water, drinking water, cancer, diabetes, overweight, leukemia, and all concerns that affect many people in the Asian community across Scotland. Another health concern is the spreading of hepatitis C, which affects the well-being of many Scots in the Asian community in Scotland. It is estimated that around 39,000 people across Scotland are infected with hepatitis C, according to Hepatitis C Trust. Raising awareness of hepatitis C is essential in maintaining the high standards that Scotland has for its citizens. Presiding officer, people sometimes underestimate the value of donation of organs and in particular blood. The fact that uh, we have this motion today actually highlights and indicates the importance. The Imam Hussain blood donation uh, has highlighted something not only for us Scots, but also the Muslim communities in Scotland. And the Muslim community in Scotland needs to demonstrate their indication and their willingness to help and show some real interchange and dedication in this area. The Imam Hussain Blood Donation Trust, uh, or rather the, the, the campaign for donation of blood is an important one. And I personally am really grateful for them for making the effort to bring this to our attention, not only in Scotland, but also in the Scottish Parliament. I want to commend the, the champions, the organizations, the people who make the effort of making health a priority for us in Scotland today. And I once again wish to thank Jim Eady for bringing this motion to the Scottish Parliament today because it highlights the importance of working together and improving and campaigning for such valuable uh, causes. So, uh, Jim, not only do I thank you for bringing the, the motion to us today, but also the al -Bayt Society in Edinburgh, and I encourage them and wish them well, not only in this campaign in Edinburgh, but I hope that they will take it to Glasgow, in which I would want to play a role with them as well. And thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you, Providing Officer. Thank you very much. I now call on James Dornan to be followed by Dr. Richard Simpson. Uh, 
Thank you, President Officer. I want to join with my colleagues in congratulating Jim Eady on bringing this debate to the Chamber. Congratulate the work being done by the Edinburgh Al Bait Society in encouraging Muslim residents of Edinburgh and the Lothians to donate blood. Welcome those already mentioned by Jim Eady to the Chamber, particularly my friend Shabir Beg, who I see sitting up the back there. Uh, and say that the Iman Hussein blood donation campaign, as has already been mentioned, uh, to increase the number of regular blood donors from the Muslim community appears to have been already a, a great success. Tying it to the memory and the work of the Imam Hussein seems to have worked. I was delighted to hear that Glasgow had begun to hold donation sessions as well. Too often people who do small charitable acts don't see the bigger picture about what that half hour of their lives has actually done and it has saved lives. Beside an officer, I want to repeat a statistic that Mr Reader uh, used in his opening because I think it's crucial to the debate. Over the course of a year, a woman could save up to nine adult lives and 21, ch or ch 21 children's lives. A man could save up to 12 adult lives and 28 children's lives. But I was particularly touched by the statistic that three teaspoonfuls of blood can save the life of a premature baby. My partner works with premature babies every day, and it really brings home how, even from a distance, you can help some of these tiny little children survive. After all, as the campaign says, blood is a pr precious resource which can benefit others and save lives. And that is an extremely powerful message. We need 5,000 blood donations every week in Scotland just to keep up with demand. And as we know, blood has an extremely short shelf life, so it needs to be a constant stream of donations. Therefore, the Scottish Blood Transfusion Service, along with the regular donation sch schedules, run a project called Blood Donor 24. This is Scotland's emergency blood donor response team, made up of folk who have pledged to respond within 24 hours should the need for a donation of their blood group arise. Shortages in blood types can arise for many reasons, as has already been mentioned by, uh, by Jim Eady, from it being a bank holiday to a major incident or emergency. And of course, when it is an emergency, that is when it's easiest sometimes to get donors. Who can forget the queues of people stretching around the block from the Glasgow offices after the Clutha Vaults tragedy? And so great was the response that the service had to ask people to delay donating for a couple of weeks as they had too much blood. Yet despite us instinctively recognising how important blood is, how many lives can be saved each year by blood donations, it's still the case, that, as already been mentioned, that only around 4% of eligible blood donors donate. And that is something that we all have to work on. One area that another area of blood transfusion service is working on is getting younger people to become donors. Recent research shows that only 46% of 17-year-olds were even aware that they could give blood. It's crucial that we engage with young donors because the average age of a donor in Scotland is now over 40. I know that 20% of new donors come from the Give Blood School Talks programme, which last year signed up 5,000 new volunteers. Their message is celebrate your 17th birthday and celebrate saving a life. I think this work is extremely important, and I'll be contacting the service to see if there are other ways that we can engage young people to give blood, perhaps through working with youth groups and sports or art centres. The work of the Scottish Blood Transfusion Service is critical in the excellent blood donation service that we have here in Scotland, a service that will get even better when the work in the construction of the Bespoke National Centre is completed. The National Centre will provide a flexible, modern pharmaceutical industry standard environment for the service's staff to continue to deliver a safe, efficient supply of blood components across Scotland. This will also provide an ongoing contribution to our leading life science research and development industry. I congratulate the Imam Hussein blood donation campaign on the work that they are doing in getting more Muslims to donate blood and the work of the Scottish Blood Transfusion Service to ensure that blood is kept safe and used efficiently and look forward to working with the service to see how we can encourage more people to take part in this simple but life-saving act. Thank you. And thank you. I now call on Dr Richard Simpson, after which we will go to the closing speech from the Minister. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I want to add my congratulations to others, for, uh, to GMED, for getting this debate. I think it is an important one in that it draws attention to the fact that if groups out in the community actually get together to promote something, then it can be successful and it cre creates public awareness. But it also allows us as parliamentarians to make that point in Parliament and hopefully have it picked up in the press. And we will see in the next day or two whether this is picked up in the press or not. I hope, I hope that it is. Because the al Bat Society, in combination with the Islamic uh, Unity Society and the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service, are, in running this Imam Hussein blood donation campaign, are doing exactly that. 
they are promoting something that is hugely worthwhile because it emphasizes, as Malcolm Chisholm said, the ethical and moral background to our blood donation program in this country. It is not a commercial event. It is an act of selfless volunteering. And that being encouraged in schools, in youth clubs, as James Dorn has said, are, is really vital that we actually m massively encourage the next uh, generation to uh, donate blood. We have been hugely successful in this country over the, since the parliament was founded in increasing organ donation registration. We now have the highest level of that in any of the home nations. We should be doing the same in terms of the blood transfusion to promote it well beyond the four or 5%. I know that this organization, the Blood Transfusion Service, uh, with whom I had considerable dealings in the first parliament at the time of the, the initial discussions on the hepatitis B issue, uh, hepatitis C issue rather, um, uh, is, is a, a highly ethical organization uh, that operates on, on uh, uh, the basis of research and evidence with patient safety as at the core of its, actual, of its work. However, I think that the, the uh, question of uh, donation from LGBT is something which is of, of importance in terms of our discussions. I think looking at the age factor is important. I used to be a donor. I'm now over 70, so I'm uh, not allowed to donate, although in fact because of illness I probably wouldn't be allowed to, or because of the medicines I take, I wouldn't be allowed to donate now. But uh, the question is whether the age restrictions that there are are actually something that need to be, be under review. And I'd like to conclude, uh, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer, in this short intervention by just referring to one or two things. One is the fact that I think over the last 10, 15 years, the amount of blood that is wasted within the hospitals has been reduced very significantly, and that that is very important because it's not just the uh, supply that's important, but actually what happens at the other end. And I think that the work that's being done on that to reduce the need for blood is critically important. And part of that is also dealing with, with wasted blood uh, during operation. I think an area that we haven't expanded sufficiently is people giving their own blood prior to operations. This isn't always appropriate, but nevertheless, I think it's, a, it's a, an area that is actually underdeveloped. And the last point I'd like to make is that I think that we need to be sending a very clear message to employers that they have a responsibility in terms of their social responsibility to encourage their employees to take part in this. I know that many do already, but many more need to, because we do need blood donation, and particularly starting from now during the winter, we need that blood donation to occur. So thank you, Jim Eady, for bringing this debate, for educating us on this society, which I did not know about until you raised the motion. Uh, that has been extremely welcome, and I've been glad to be able to contribute to this debate. Many thanks. And I now call on the Minister, Michael Matheson, um, to conclude the debate on behalf of the Government. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I, like others, um, offer my congratulations to Jim Eady in securing time for uh, this important and very worthwhile uh, debate. And I have listened with real interest to the contributions that have been made by all members here this evening. I also want to take this opportunity to uh, join the Parliament in congratulating the Edinburgh Aho by Society uh, on the launch of the Iman Hussein blood donation campaign uh, for 2014, uh, which they have undertaken in cooperation with the Islamic Unity Society and with the Scottish National Blood Transfusion uh, Service. This is a, a very welcome initiative, particularly given the importance of ensuring uh, people of all backgrounds in Scotland are willing to donate blood to ensure stocks are available when they are needed. Officer, blood donation is one of the great acts of human compassion. For someone to take time out of their busy day to donate some of their own blood in order to help someone they will never know and probably never meet is a remarkable act of generosity in itself. The amount of blood being donated in Scotland is important but so too is the type of blood which is being donated. We know that blood type is generally related to our ethnic origins and the majority of Muslims in Scotland are from ethnic minorities. It's therefore important that people from minority ethnic groups in Scotland donate to ensure that the right sort of blood is available when it is most needed. 
We know too that some people need blood transfusions for life and some blood disorders are found predominantly in South Asian communities. These people rely on regular supply of blood and it's important that they receive the right type of blood that they require. Often, uh, rare blood groups are more common within certain minority ethnic groups, so it's important that we encourage people with rarer blood, type, rarer blood types to donate uh, as is necessary. That's why I very much welcome sign off of this particular campaign, because it seeks to promote donation, uh, but also to raise awareness about these issues in a segment of our society. Scotland is committed to promoting a multi-faith and a multi-cultural society based on mutual trust, respect and understanding of one another. And the Scottish uh, National Blood Transfusion Service has met with these community representatives to set specific attendance days in order to ensure donation arrangements are satisfactory and that they are well explained to them. This particular campaign is working hard to achieve the necessary change, diversity and positivity within the community, as well as promoting and encouraging integration. We have to also acknowledge that there can be challenges in forming Scottish Muslims about blood donation, as there are different views across Islam about the acceptability of blood donation, and it's not for us as a government or as a parliament to dictate on these matters. But we do know that blood donation has been recommended and approved by Muslim scholars as not only permitted but as also being praiseworthy. And I hope that as a result of this particular campaign, many Scottish Muslims will come to this particular view. I'm also uh, very happy to offer the government's support to this campaign and to, I've got no doubt that it will uh, produce a great deal of good. I hope that Scottish Muslims will be inspired by Imam Hussein's legacy and give blood for the sake of the wider community here in Scotland. I would also like to take this opportunity to us people from South Asian backgrounds to speak to their peers about organ donation and to get the full facts so that they can also make an informed decision about organ donation. Clearly, President Officer, this particular initiative relates to Edinburgh and the Lothians area and is focused on Muslims. But I think there is a lesson here for Scotland more generally and for other communities. Like Islam, I know that Sikhism and Hinduism all see blood donation as being a positive thing to contribute. And through the 2011 census, we know that Scotland is becoming an ever more ethnically and religiously diverse nation. I therefore hope that communities right across Scotland, whether they be in Jedburgh or in John O'Groats, will take part in this important act of charity in donating blood. It would be tremendous to see campaigns just like this one being replicated in different groups and in different communities right across Scotland. Donating blood, presiding officer, is simply is a simple but amazing act. We need more people from different backgrounds to donate because our population is becoming more diverse. And we particularly need, as Richard Simpson correctly highlighted, more young people in our donor base who will make a lifelong commitment to donating blood. New, committed and active donors are essential to safeguarding our future supplies of blood products. I would also urge everyone to give blood if they can, particularly those who have never donated blood, those who haven't given blood for a while. And it would be great if donors could encourage their friends and their families to also have a go and to reassure them that it's a very straightforward process. Blood donations are a vital resource to help treat cancer and many other long-term conditions. But also people involved in accidents and in maternity care require access to blood and blood products on a regular basis. 
Presiding officer, everything that we can do to promote blood donations is worthwhile. And I'm pleased to be able to offer the support of the Scottish Government to the Imam Hussein Blood Donation Campaign 2014. Many thanks. I thank you all for taking part in this important debate. And I close this meeting of Parliament. Thank <laughs> you.